it's not worth it. Hello everyone, Dean is a fair to back again with some what's on deck. I've uh, covered most of the new decks this week on the Black Friday video I did on Friday. Uh, just a quick recap, 311 released a new Darren Ground deck which looks gorgeous. They also have new gold artisans which have foil backs. I think there's also some foil on the faces. But you had to spend $150 to get one and I tried. And I just didn't feel like spending $150 to get one. Apparently they claim they're, they've released one to every target, one to every target store. So good luck finding one. I don't really believe that. I don't think that a department store would go, yeah, we'll stock this one deck for the hell of it. That makes no sense to me. Um, let me get this out of the way. <laughs> House of Fighting Cards released, of course, a new uh, wood knock deck, wood NLC deck, which is brown. Um, they also released a new bicycle inspired deck in black. They also have some giveaways. They also have some new foiled NLC decks, the Simlin deck and the Knock 3000 X1s. This makes me believe that they had a lot of extras and they weren't selling. So here, we'll foil them and now more people will buy them. <laughs> because why not? Conjuring Arts. Um, I thought they would have the new uh, exquisite Fortuna deck. They did not, but Giovanni has it on his website, which is just quite too expensive. Actually, I think they did have it as well. Yeah, they did. It's 85 bucks, so really expensive. I know it has three foils on it and a nice back design, but then the faces are standard, aside from the Ace of Spades and Jokers, which don't even look like they belong in that deck. I don't like stuff like that. And it seems like they're just overpricing it just for the hell of it, bringing money. Same with the Jerry's Nugget Owner's Reserve deck, apparently 500 was reduced. The black with gold foil on the back design. I believe some on the faces as well. I can't really recall. Uh, maybe not the face, but the tuck case as well. Um, and they're selling, they were selling some, they sold out, I believe, 95 bucks. No, thank you. Again, that's an inflated price that they just tacked on for the hell of it to make money. For the non profit, yeah, right, Conjuring Arts. They're not non profit. I don't buy that crap whatsoever. Um, what else is it? The Blue Crown, I didn't mention the Blue Crown as a bunch of tricks, no cards. It's all on House of Point cards. I've not seen if Svengali website released anything new. I don't think so. Um, David Blaine apparently did not release anything. Just signed gold split spades. What other websites was there? There is a new deck from Van, two new decks from Van the Point cards. The red, which is kind of basically made for card history. It's very minimalist has no indexes, and very minimalist in the court cards. And then there's the new uh, Polaris Solstice deck, the newest in the Polaris line, which is nice and colorful, and I'm definitely getting that one. And there's a couple of new decks from Zentsupplyco.com, which they got on Amazon. Two bicycle rider decks. Also, they have plastic variants, if you're interested in that. Moving on, though. Let's go on to Kickstarter and we'll talk about a few other things. So, first of all, we got this new deck, the Luchadors, playing cards. Viva la raza! <laughs> From Emmanuel Valtiera, it's uh, not doing too well. $1,000 currently at a $5,000 goal. It's an interesting back design. Very Mexican wrestling kind of inspired. The pips look like little luchador masks, that's kind of cool. There you see some. Luchadors are masked wrestlers from Mexico. They, they live in those masks practically. Um, 
you see the jokers and the court cards are interesting but I'm not really feeling them unfortunately yeah they might what the hell was that <laughs> it might have been better if you can actually like make out the wrestler a little bit better it just kind of all I don't know bleeds together I guess and then they got tentacles for some reason I don't know not really feeling them. I do like the aces with the masks. That's cool. There is stretch goals. Eighty-five hundred dollars. They will print with the legends. Currently, it's being printed with the noir arts. I don't think they're gonna hit the stretch goal. I'm not exactly confident they're gonna fund it this way. But his projects tend to slowly get there. You can see he's got his previous decks available as well. I think maybe not. Also, he's got a Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Cyber Monday deal going on for every. For the early bird pledges, he's also throwing in a very different deck. That he hasn't had a Kickstarter. He's only had on Instagram and Facebook, apparently. It's Loteria, the Mexican Bingo. He designed the whole deck with concepts from his Aztec art. And, uh, I actually remember there was a deck of cards with that name on Kickstarter before, but it's not the same one. Uh, as you can see, uh, each card has different figures on it, names and numbers. Very different, not definitely not your typical thing with cards. Yeah, it's not a bad price, 11 bucks for one deck. You can also add on the Maserata and the Anthology, which are some of most recent decks. Like I said I'm not confident this one's gonna fun. Moving on, we've got the Antive Sunlight point cards, which why is it not loaded up? There you go. Sunlight, really? I would have expected this deck to be orangey red. Not blue. This looks like a water deck. I don't understand that. Uh it combines nature and graphic designs by and put that by Hanson Chen, aka Taiwan. Okay, so I guess it, it makes a point. It says that without the Olsons and sea, it wouldn't be life on Earth. It gets two thirds of the oxygen is produced by seaweed, only one third by trees. I did not know that. It's a good thing the Olsons are not on fire then. <laughs> um, I guess. Hmm. So that kind of makes some sense. Eight pounds, eight euros, sorry, for one deck on the Black Friday special, which still quite a few of those left. The bat design, the visky water waves with random stripes going through for the hell of it. And the court cards and everything are completely standard. I don't know what he did to the eyes of that king. They just look weird. Custom faces. No, that's not custom. That's just recolored. My friend. Not really feeling it. Moving on. We got the bicycle Christmas deck, which will be delivered next year. Not Christmas. <laughs> I always dislike it when people do that. Hey, here's a Halloween deck, but it's not going to be delivered until December. Well, here's a Christmas deck. But you might get it for your crate in Christmas, if you're lucky. Not Christmas. Um, it's bicycle branded. It's getting there funding-wise. It's got an almost $4,000 Canadian goal, and it's at $2,500 now. Over, well, okay, almost $4,000. Almost $3,400 Canadian goal. So, less than $1,000 left. Ah, it's not bad. It's by Deck Lab Inc. Their first project was concerned me. Although, I believe it says, yes, it's by Lai Ching Alex Pua, which aka means Magic Square. So, I guess they're reliable, or, you know, dependable. Court cards are. Very interesting. Mm. 
nice custom bips, bad designs, interesting. It's one I would definitely pick up later on. And the Zokas are a diptych, they make a little scene, which is pretty cool. You know, overall it's not bad. They put it by USB-C, obviously. And for filled with care <laughs> by Gambler's Warehouse. Um, yeah, my problem is where it says it's going to be delivered, estimated delivery in January 2020. No chance in hell that's going to happen. The project doesn't even end for another 15 days, which puts it into the middle of December. They're not going to be printing for two weeks at the end of December. And then there's going to be a backlog. There already is a backlog, I'm sure. I don't see this being printed in, in January, or at least certainly not being delivered in January. Especially considering it also has to go probably all the way to Hong Kong, and then it's going to be fulfilled. I know, sorry, be fulfilled by gamblers. That's right. Um, I take that back. But anyways, I just don't see it happening. That's too fast for a turnaround. Not to mention, you also got to take into consideration. We're not going to get the money for the project until probably the start of the year with the holidays and everything. And the two weeks it takes for Kickstarter to give them their money. I think it's two weeks. Um, yeah, unless, unless it's already in production, which wouldn't surprise me, that's a possibility. That's the only way it's going to be out in, in January. Moving along, we got, I wanted to mention this one, a new deck from R.J. Tomlinson, Robert Tomlinson. It is a Titanic Tarot deck. It's got a massive goal, massive I guess, $20,000. It's just over halfway at $11,000. I don't know if it's going to fund as a result. It's got a lot of backers though. Uh, you can see, uh, like what is that? The tower is a, uh, it's a Titanic sticking out of the ocean. The fool is somebody still on the boat, I guess, or somebody going on the boat. I don't know. Nice box. Looks like it's going to be gilded. Back design. It basically the same as the one he used on the poker decks he put out before. Pretty nice artwork. I love the case. It's you know like something you would find on a Titanic to some extent. There's also going to be a booklet, and a waxed seal envelope, which will have a boarding pass for one of the 2,224 passengers that sailed on Titanic. Love stuff like that, little things that don't necessarily have to do, but he does it with these decks. I've always been a fan of the Titanic decks he produced. Um, they will start with boarding passes for people who died, since they're kind of doing this project in order to, you know, to complete the journey with people who didn't get finished, which is cool. That's kind of cool. Um, he is designing this for the, the, the case. Uh, he was designing it and he had a little happy accident where the iceberg under the water turned into, uh, turned out to be a little bit demonic, like a skull, and he decided to go with it. And I think that looks pretty interesting, very interesting dynamic to take on that. I assume more of the artwork. I don't know what the minor cards look like. Hopefully we'll see that. Because it is a 78 card deck, so it's not just going to be these cards. It also has some jumbo cards available, which has History of Titanic. I think I got that deck, the poker size deck. 
Ah, uh, I, I don't know what. I also don't know if he's pointing them. But, I mean, I like the idea and the effort. Oh, it's going to be printed by WJPC. That's fine. WJ Printing in China. So, moving on. I apologize. Let me get on here. Next up, we have Gin and Tonic. Yeah. It is funded at a $3,000 goal. It, it, it's just a blue back design with a drink glass on it, cocktail, I guess. Um, a gin and tonic. But it's basically looks like a lot of other decks. It looks like a lot of the riffle supple decks, except with the beverage instead of the fruit. Um, how exciting. <laughs> I've seen this one before on Instagram, and I don't know how I feel about it. I don't think I'm going to be getting it at any point in time, but we'll see. Basis pages are right. Court cards. What does it say here? Largely the same as scattered soccer. Crest Casino be stopped. Different tennis, uh, etc. etc. Vuza Day playing card company instead of Deja Vu. <laughs> Funny. Moving on, uh, we have the Leonardo Masterworks from Art Playing Cards. It is very well funded, almost. $10,000 paying goal, and it's at almost $20,000 now, almost double the goal. From what I've seen, as far as I can tell, it's the same decks as before. I don't know if it is just a repackaging. I haven't really said that, because that's not allowed on Kickstarter. But they buy USB Cito, and the finest playing card finishes. Three dimensional embossed seals, foil seal. That's kind of interesting. And yeah, it looks like a pretty interesting case on this one. And packaging, as you can see. Yeah, I like those little stands for the decks. It's pretty cool. But the artwork, best as I can tell, is the same as the previous decks. So I don't plan on getting them. As far as I mean, it might even be the same cards in the new box. I, I'm not really sure. Hey, yeah, maybe they are a bit different. I'll have to compare and you know, think about whether or not I'm going to get them. But for now, I'm not. But it's a pretty interesting project. If you like it, you might want to check it out. And then let's talk about a few other things. Illusionist did not release anything specifically for Black Friday. They had already released stuff. But they have something here that I thought I'd mention and that oh, that didn't open, did it? They have a new set of cohort gaff decks, a gaff system by Lloyd Barnes, as you can see. I don't plan on picking it up, but it's there if you're interested. We'll have a quick peek if it will load up. <laughs> Two decks, 23 tricks. Yeah, I'm, maybe I'll pick it up at some point. That we'll see. I'm just I'm not opposed to it. They also have stretch cards <laughs> in the cards, which I'm not interested in. Um, let me know. Do you want me to review this set? Uh, I, I'll get it if that's the case. Oh, I see. So it's a regular deck, the cohorts plus the cohort specials, which is 56 unique and original 
gas plant Gorgeous Duncan. It's a nice set. These are five dollars of explanations. That's pretty cool. And you see on the back of the box are gaps. All the tricks. Cohort specials. It's yeah, maybe not bad. I'm not gonna cut my cards out though. You know, that's me. <laughs> Moving on, speaking of which I wanted to mention that the cohorts have now been re-released in red, printed on the new Luxury Press P7 stock, the second edition. I'm guessing that's what comes in that set. Well, that's another reason for me to get it. <laughs> um, and then, let's go to Murphy's here quickly. I wanted to mention they have, speaking of gap decks, a new gap deck, which I think they're still waiting for them. They're coming in a few days. You see DMC Elites. Pro Gaps V1. Lots well, of double batteries and blank faces, blank cards, but some other gaps as well. And I will be checking that out. It's available. It's like a pretty nice box. Very nice box, actually. Speaking of gaps, this is an interesting one they have as well on Murphy's Magic. It's a bit more pricey. It's not a traditional deck of cards, but I, I looked at this and I thought, ah, this is pretty cool. But I would mention it. It's the Warehouse deck. Not sure who printed it. 52 cards that reveal all the mysteries hidden behind the government. Edgar Allan Poe is on there. Only 500. Free routine included. Uh, every character or element of the cards easily known by everyone is great for, as it says, for magicians, mentalists, storytellers, and bizarrists, whatever a bizarrist is. Um, they are also marked, so you can recognize a picture of the card and do a text with that. It's also a one way deck, apparently. And oh, also the rest of I just thought it was pretty interesting, pretty unique, and thought I would mention it. And then there's also this a new limited edition Murphy's Magic, a limited edition of the King's Law Americana deck, which I might have mentioned the other day. Um, I think I did. It apparently is a slight recolor from the regular Americanas. So there's that, and I've seen these available at other sites. And that is that for this week, I do believe. There are a couple of new projects to keep an eye out on. One is the Latin Quarter deck, which I believe launches in a few days. I think in the second act. I think it's tomorrow. Latin Quarter, which I have a review on my channel on a Artist Proof deck. You can check that out. Very nice. Uh, a deck made for a gambling or based on a gambling joint in New Orleans, if I recall correctly. And I just wanted to see a couple other things. Ah, Just double check the data plate quickly. Yeah, I don't see anything new. I thought there was going to be some new foiled data backs. They were on, they had a picture on Instagram. And then a couple of days ago, a few days ago, that disappeared, and there's not been any sign of that. But sales continue on all the websites. And you can check them out. Oh, yes, the other one that's coming soon is this The Charmers, designed by Lothric and Keller O'Neill, who's a magician. It's beautiful, very nice. Coming to Kickstarter, apparently, there's going to be a couple of colors. Um, it's coming this week, I think the fifth.
no doubt it's going to fund like that. <laughs> It's beautiful looking, nice box and everything. Apparently this looks gonna be perfect. <laughs> and yeah, it should be coming soon. I don't remember exactly when. I'll keep you updated. Uh outside of that, I have oh there's one I don't think I've mentioned yet. Pretty much mentioned the others before the other videos. Couple more I will mention here. First of all, is this the bicycle pan seva, which yeah, is apparently on this kind of Japanese Kickstarter type thing. It's Japanese Kickstarter type thing, I guess. Um, fairly standard modified jokers and ace of spades. Some of the other cards modified. What is it with the Japanese modified? Some of the number cards, but not all of them. And just having, I don't know, it just was kind of strange. <laughs> uh, it's one that, you know, I hope maybe I'll be able to find, but I'm, you know, I'm not going to go out of my way to find it or, you know, overpay to get it. And then there's also this new Super 5 deck. The Super Fly Dazzle from Gemini Dex is probably sold out. Camouflage patterns. Aha. Inspired by Dazzle camouflage patterns used on military ships during World War One. Okay. Maybe it should be in like green colors. <laughs> it is sold out as I expected. Suspected. Not that I was planning on getting it. It's not very exciting. As you can see, it says super fly on the court cards. Modified a pip. It also says super fly on it. And we colored it and modified it a bit. How exciting. So that's going to be it for this week. Please <laughs> leave a comment, rate, subscribe, and what you think. And we'll see you on some more. Thanks for watching. If I could figure out how to stop this, of course. <laughs> oh, boy.